Y en este segmento vamos a hablar de Fórmula Drift, eh, una competencia de automovilismo muy especial que va a tener una fecha muy próximamente aquí en el sur de la Florida, en el Homestead Speedway. Y para eso vamos a hablar con Ryan Sage, uno de los cofundadores de la Fórmula Drift aquí en Estados Unidos. And now we're going to talk to uh, Ryan about a Formula Drift. How are you, Ryan? So um, I've been seeing a lot of things about a Formula Drift, and uh, honestly, I didn't know much about it. It looks really exciting. So can you please explain a little bit to our audience? So Formula Drift is a 11-year-old drift championship that uh, started uh, here in Southern California. Um, we've grown to a, a nationwide series, and also have uh, an international series in Asia, uh, where we basically put on the highest-level professional drift events. So for, if you're familiar with drifting, you might know who we are. If you're not familiar with drifting, drifting is a subjective motorsport that is judged rather than about how fast a driver gets around the track or from point A to point B. Yeah, and it requires a lot of skill from what I've seen, right? I, I would definitely say so. I, I think some. I think our drivers are some of the top drivers, uh, you know, in the world in, in car control. We see a lot of guys uh, develop from the rally and also road racing, but also some guys that are just natural born drifters that come up through the grassroots ranks and they have an incredible ability to be able to control the car uh, in a way that you don't get to see too often. Yeah. And uh, so you have a schedule of, I guess, a championship that goes uh, on uh, through the year on different sides of the country? Can you tell us about it, please? Like, uh, what's the schedule, what's coming up, what's going on? So, we just finished our first two rounds. We kicked off our very first round in Long Beach, California, uh, on the street uh, of Long Beach down here, which is uh, the, the track that the Long Beach Grand Prix uses. Uh, after that, we went to Road Atlanta, which is uh, in Brazelton, Georgia, right outside of uh, Atlanta, uh, where we had our second round, and now we're headed to a brand new facility for the first time at Homestead, Miami, which we've had events down in South Florida before, but this is the first time that we've done an event uh, in the Miami area, and uh, we're really looking forward to it. Yeah, that's great. So, can you uh, tell me a little bit how is the track you utilize for drifting? Because, uh, from my understanding, drifting is not as, as you say, a speed uh, competition uh, or event. I mean, like the drivers have to go pretty much into a circle or a, a square or something like that, and then like do their maneuvers in the car. So, how is the track used for this event? Well, if you're if you're familiar with track at Homestead, you'll know that it has an infield road course as well as uh, the, the traditional NASCAR oval. We don't use the traditional NASCAR oval. We actually use a section of the oval plus the road course to put the actual track together. So you have a very high speed entry that leads into a section of turn uh, for you know about 20 to 30 seconds and then you, you cross the finish line. So basically drivers are leaving the finish line, they're drifting, holding the car sideways at a very high rate of speed, close to or maybe possibly over 100 miles per hour, with tire, with tire smoke coming off the car, then they're navigating through the turns as they drift, and then they finish the, the course. Now, they do that individually for qualifying, and they get judged by the criteria and by the judges, but the main part of the show is actually when two drivers do it on the course at the same time based on how they actually qualify. So we have 32 potential spots. So the number one qualifier goes up against the 32nd qualifier. The second place guy goes up against the 31st qualifier and so on. And so you're in a bracket system oh, I see. to try to find out who is going to be the, the driver that will win the event at the end of the night. Oh. And uh, is that, what are the qualifications for the car, the specs that are the cars are required? I guess there has to be some limits and they have to be pretty much equal to compete? Well, that's one of the interesting things about drifting is that we we have such a diverse range of vehicles in the series. As far as power plant is concerned, there is no minimum or no maximum amount of horsepower that you can have in the car. The only the, the rules in drifting are basically mostly structured around uh, having a stock chassis, so you can't bring like a tube frame car or something like that. Yeah. But as far as as far as the engine build, as far as the suspension. A lot of those 
particular aspects are actually open. And so what you see is you see a, a wide array of vehicles competing in Formula Drift uh, from, you know, Nissan 370Zs to Mustangs to uh, older uh, chassis vehicles in the Nissan family. You know, we've got, uh, you know, Chevrolet Camaros. We even get some exotics from time to time. But one of the fascinating things about it that I think is really fun is that because we are a stock chassis competition um, and because there's no limitations on horsepower, currently within the series right now, drifting, uh, Formula Drift has the, the most powerful stock chassis vehicles in the world. We've got cars that range up to 1,200, 1,300 horsepower. Wow. Um, with like with like the average horsepower being between eight and nine hundred is pretty typical. So really, I mean, I was talking about skill before, before, uh, uh, before this, but now, I mean, you really require a lot of skill to control that kind of power in a car. Yeah, that, that is one of the things that I think is so attractive about it is not only do you get to see a, a wider range of vehicles, you get to see drivers piloting cars that have more horsepower than you can imagine. And because the whole idea is to break the grip of the vehicle, it's a very smoky, very loud, choreographed uh, show that fans get to see every time they come into town. Excellent. So can you tell us a little bit about uh, prices and how can people find about the event in Miami and uh, the rest of the calendar for 2014? Sure. So, I mean, anything with respect to our, our event or our event series can always be found on our website, which is uh, We'll be at Miami Homestead Speedway on May 30th and 31st, so it's just less than three weeks away. Um, the rest of our schedule, basically, after we leave Miami, we, we head north to New Jersey. From there, we go to the West Coast, and we'll do our West Coast tour with um, Seattle, Washington, head down to Texas, uh, and then we'll come back finally for one of our closing rounds in Southern California. Yeah, and also uh, another question, Ryan. Uh, this is something that is very attractive, especially for young kids who are starting to, to drive and want to imitate these kind of things. Uh, do you guys uh, provide any kind of uh, training or academies or some kind of uh, guidance to, to kids that want to do that but do it in a safe way? One of the interesting things I think about the sport of drifting and the way that it's developed is that the grassroots side of it is actually very strong. So there are a ton of resources, not only listed on our website, but also through our affiliate program, where drivers can go and practice their hand at drifting, whether or not that they, they have a car. But the great thing about drifting is that the barrier to entry, cost-wise, is very low. Yes, yes, you definitely, as a pro, the cars are going to be much more expensive. But one of the things that is tough for regular families to be able to absorb about the cost of racing is the fact that it's just so expensive. But in drifting, we don't really have those cost barriers. So it's much more attractive for people that want to get behind the wheel of a car, do something fun, like, you know, jacking a car sideways, and be able to do it without blowing the bank. So I think that's one of the cool things about it, too. Yeah, and also doing it in a safe environment because that's what you guys provide too, right? I mean, like you're in a closed racetrack and like with tons of uh, say, uh, safety measures around it and all that. Yeah, there's. I mean, there's a lot of different. There's a lot of different levels, but all, most of our pro am affiliates um, are are affiliates of us because they've gone through uh, credentialing because they use the proper track, proper safety equipment. You know, we want to make sure that everybody that we work with is safe. And so there's a lot of resources out there. I would just encourage anybody that's interested in the sport, go to our website, check out some of the Pro-Am guys, and, you know, find yourself a, a Friday night drift. Excellent. And uh, did you start this because you love doing it, I guess? Or how did you start it? Why did you start it? You know, it's a, it's a, it's a long story, but, um, you know, I had always been into cars. I started off my interest in cars at a really young age uh, before I was driving and by the time I got to be, you know, 15, 16, um, I was desperately wanting to get, you know, into uh, a custom car. I was building cars right when I turned 16. My first car was, you know, a low, lower truck that I modified. And then from there, I, I moved right into kind of the performance side of, of, you know, road racing and building cars for show and things like that. So I'd always, I'd always had that as something that I'd been interested in. It wasn't until I actually started 
working um, uh, with, a, with this marketing company that I started with my partner that we, we kind of came across the opportunity to develop drifting because it was just kind of coming to head in, in Japan. And uh, we kind of basically came across the opportunity. We saw it. We thought it would be amazing to have it here in the, in the U.S. And that's pretty much how it all started. Well, that's great, Ryan Sage from uh, Formula Drift. So thank you very much for your time and information. And again, all uh, information, everybody who is interested in uh, going to the event in Miami or anywhere world uh, around the country, FormulaD.com, right? Yes, that's it. Well, thank you very much, Ryan. Again, I hope to see you here in Miami uh, uh, in a few weeks. All right, take care. Thanks thank you, lot. bye. Este programa fue una producción de National Latino Broadcasting.